now available in paperback and e-readers, Spellbound, a darker shade of black. Get your copy today at your favorite online bookseller. Some of these black males with the passports who have traveled overseas say that I should not have made any videos about black men with passports because I don't have the money to travel. Well, when I take a critical examination of that statement, I see a group of black men who take their life in this country for granted, and I see a group of black men who do not appreciate how God has blessed them to live as well as they have. Now, many of these black males, they really do not understand that many brothers out here, like myself, a lot of us are struggling, and a lot of us, we sit there, and we, when we look at a black man who has resources, and he sits there and talks about getting his passport to go overseas, we see a black man who takes his money for granted, and a black man who takes his position in life for granted. Because, again, many brothers out here, we are not as blessed as you are to have the money that you have. But when I look at the way a black, when I see a black male spending his money to go overseas, I see a man who does not appreciate the opportunity that was given to him nor do I see a black man who appreciates the resources that are given to him. Because when you have a black man who has these kind of resources, and he's sitting there taking his money and saying that I want to go to overseas to pursue a relationships with foreign women, this is a man who sits there and, as I see it, does not, again, appreciate how God has blessed him, nor does he appreciate the opportunity that has been given to him. Now, as someone who has been out of work for some time, I know that if I were blessed with that kind of money, and if I were to get access to that kind of money, I could think of a bunch of other things to do with my money rather than travel overseas to pursue relationships with foreign women. If I had that type of money, I would be trying to use that type of money towards black empowerment, towards building black owned businesses, and going out here and trying to employ many of the brothers and sisters that many of the passport black males talk down on, because to sit there and talk bad about many brothers and sisters out here, as I see it, is not constructive. If you have access to resources, you should be using those resources to make an effort to invest in your own people first, rather than try to enrich others at your own expense. Because when I look at many of the black males with the passports and them talking about having this money to travel, I see them as taking money out of their own community to enrich many of these whites and non-blacks that many complain about and giving them more of the 97% of dollars that flow out of our community with 3.3 trillion almost every year. Because all of that money that these black males with the passport spend on hotels, on airfare, on, and even buying drinks and meals for most of these women in these foreign countries, all of that money is flowing out of our black community, the same community that many of these black men live in, and going right back in the hands of many of these same people who really don't care about black men. So these black males, they're sitting there believing they have done something great because they have this great money, but all they're doing is continuing to fund and support many of the same people that many complain about that are in their own community, just like these Arab store owners, these Korean hair and nail salons, these Indian-owned fast food restaurants, and many other businesses in their community. What these guys are doing with the passports is taking that money that what usually goes to those businesses and takes it directly to those people overseas 
Moreover, they take that same money on hotel and airfare and continue to enrich many of the same corporations that would not even think about hiring many of our brothers and sisters in the community. So they're sitting there talking about how they have this money to travel, but they take their black dollars and they don't use them to enrich other black people. So when I look at their actions, they sit there and talk about how they have this money to travel, but they don't use this money and make it travel in their own community. So they're sitting there, again, mad because I talk about passports, but when I have the money that some of them used to donate to me through Patreon, PayPal, and cash apps, what I would do with those dollars was I was trying to invest it in some of the brothers and sisters out here by doing things like donating to people's Kickstarters, hiring black artists to do my covers, and going out here and pledging money on black artists in Indiegogos. So a lot of that money that a lot of these men decided to stop donating to me through Patreon, PayPal's, and cash apps, many of those dollars aren't going to be able to go to those black create comic creators, those black sci-fi creators, and those black fantasy creators because I'm not going to have that money to spend on those projects because a lot of those brothers out here, these black comic creators, these black sci-fi creators, these black fantasy creators, I would take the money that I would get from donations and I would use that money towards black creators and getting funding, helping to fund and support their projects. So what I would do was take that black dollar from one brother and I would flip it over to another brother in an effort to keep money in the black community. But your black passport males, they were so in their feelings because I was trying to refute a false narrative as related to passports. They want to talk about how, because I don't have the money to travel, I need to remain silent about, these, about this money. But what I was trying to do, again, was trying to help this black male because I understand the value of a dollar in a white supremacist society in a black hand. Now, your black male, he sits there and talks about how I shouldn't talk about traveling because I don't have the money to travel. Well, Bill Cosby had the money to travel. Bill Cosby was one of the richest men here in America. Bill Cosby was worth over $400 million. Bill Cosby was blessed to the point where he was literally paying full-ride scholarships for black children to go to college. Bill Cosby helped out thousands of black people. And where is Bill Cosby now, even though he has $400 million? That's right, Bill Cosby is in prison right now, and your Bill Cosby is in prison because white supremacists wanted him to be there because he spoke against their narratives in his classic pound cake speech. And in that classic pound cake speech, your Bill Cosby wanted to speak about black empowerment because he loved his people so much that when he saw them doing badly here in America, even despite of the efforts of people like him to pay full ride scholarships for black people. Your Bill Cosby saw this and this is why he spoke out against the whole thing as related to the pound cake speech. And again, your Bill Cosby, he was one of the richest men here in America. But all of his money at the end of the day didn't mean anything in this system of global white supremacy. And all he did was speak the wrong thing to, that white supremacists didn't want to hear and spoke something as related to black empowerment. And your Bill Cosby wound up in prison. 
but your black passport, black male, he'll sit there and think that his money is going to have power when it was clear to me that Bill Cosby's money didn't have any power. And Bill Cosby was more powerful and more prominent than your black man, average on the street, who has this good job and has this money to travel. If the man like Bill Cosby, who is far more prominent and far more wealthy than your passport black male can get hemmed up, then your average black man with this money to travel can also get hemmed up in a fashion so bad that he will never be able to get back up on his feet. Because all it takes in this era of Me Too is one woman making an allegation against one of you brothers who have these good jobs, and you can wind up being brought into an office and terminated just like that. And with that termination, you could wind up having to struggle like I have had to struggle over the last 10 years. And when you look at that situation that you want to talk about my situation, you could wind up in the exact same situation where you are out of work, you are struggling, and you are doing the best you can with whatever little you can. And that can happen to you just like that. And it can happen because many of these companies, again, are filled with racists. Many of these companies are filled with white supremacists. And many of these companies are filled with these mammies in these companies who want to get you out of your job. And again, you take your life and your position for granted, and you don't, again, appreciate how blessed you are. Because for you to be able to have that good job that makes that money, that you have enough to go out here and go out and have and travel like that, you don't appreciate how God has blessed you. And that, that showed, again, in many of your statements, when you make a statement saying, I've got this money to travel. And again, you don't appreciate what you have in your hands. And what's sad, as I see it, is many of you brothers out here with the passports, many of you may never appreciate what you have until it is truly gone. Now, as someone who has been out of work from an employer for so many years, I, I look at your situation again, and I, if I were in your situation, I would see the world completely different than you would, because if you were to have had my experiences, you would see things completely differently. Now, I, like you, almost 19 years ago, thought I was getting ready to have my big break when I was working at the Strive East Harlem Employment Service as part of the AmeriCorps VISTA program. And I thought when I was working at AmeriCorps and I was doing this amazing job because everybody thought I was said I was doing this amazing job for them, I thought it was going to lead to a full-time position at Strive. And I was setting up to talk to this vice president of the company at lunch to talk about that position one day. And I went there thinking that I was going to be getting this position or an offer of a position. But when I went to that lunch, this man, who was an Ivy League educated so-called elite brother, decided to tell me to my face he had no place for me in this organization, even though he had praised me weeks before for making an effort to try to keep that same organization that was in crisis together and making efforts to try to bring some sort of stability to this same organization. So I know what can happen to a brother out here who has that good job, who ha is making that kind of money, and I know what can happen to you because it's happened to me three times in my life. And that, one, that incident at Strive showed me that when it comes down to these jobs, yes, you have this good job, but you cannot trust this good job. And 
when you're trying to get your life started, you can have somebody yank the rug out from under you and you could wind up losing everything and having to try to start all over again. And that's something I wouldn't wish on anyone out here, especially like you passport black males out here. I wouldn't wish that on you because that is one of the worst things to ever happen to someone to finally start getting your life together to the point where you're thinking you're going to get this big break. You're thinking things are going to work out and you're starting to start to ponder if you're going to start making plans to go move your life forward and do things like try to get your own place, try to start working on building a savings, basic stuff. This was what I was trying to do in 2000. It was what I was trying to do in 2002 when I got a job at a law firm and I thought that that job was going to go somewhere but it fell apart in two weeks and it was what I thought I was trying to do in 2008 where I had six or seven months on the job in civil service and I thought I was going to get my life started to the, so that I could start building and I was making plans again in 2008 when my father was alive he had an apartment I wanted to get my own place then and that was part of my plan but when I wound up in that performance evaluation and this guy's this this Jewish professor is talking about how he wants somebody with a sales and customer service background this was the start of the rug getting yanked under me yet again and then when they accused me of sleeping on the job and this black female with natural hair and supposedly pro blacks went along with him and showed how much of a mammy she was this took the rug out from under me again for the third time and it led to me losing a very good job again and I wanted, again, I was looking to start building, but every time I would try to build, I would wind up getting the rug yanked out from under me and getting everything torn down. And this is what the passport black males don't understand about being a working, about being a black man out here, because they have had a, a good solid foundation for a good number of years. A lot of these guys are established and what's sad about many of them is they see themselves as individuals and they see themselves as special individuals elite individuals just like that Ivy League dude who was at Strive thinking that they are on a higher level because they have this money but they don't think about the next man in front of them all they think about is the world from where they see it and not thinking about the world as other people have to deal with it. So they sit there and think because they have this money that this puts them in a special place and they don't really see how that place isn't as special as they think it is because Bill Cosby thought he was in a special place many years ago. He thought he was in a special place and that he was because he had 400 or half a billion dollars that nobody could touch him but sadly Bill Cosby wound up getting touched by white supremacy and sadly many of these black males with the passports don't see how they are in the same place that your Bill Cosby was and they are in the same place that Ivy League dude was they think that they are in this superior position and they think that because they have this money to travel they can dictate to someone like myself not to speak and what they really want me to do is remain silent and let them get a pass for their behavior their behavior but they, what they don't understand is the warnings I try to give them is the same warnings that I would try to give any brother out here because I don't want to see another black man wind up getting jacked up the way I have gotten jacked up in these situations because this can happen to any black man who has whether he has money or he doesn't have money you can wind up in the same situation and you could wind up like myself just like that out of work because either the white people at your job don't like you either some white woman disagrees with you some white man disagrees with you some black woman has a chip on her shoulder 
when it comes down to black male employment, black male employment is extremely fragile, black male employment is extremely unstable, and for a black male to sit there and get mad at another black male because he is trying to talk to you about traveling overseas and the dangers of traveling overseas. Moreover, somebody trying to refute a false narrative that teaches us not to value ourselves. This just shows, again, how deeply troubled many black males are because they're sitting there getting mad at another black man who is trying to tell you to not spend your money overseas on other people and these same black males will say I want to take my money away from the black man who, who they disagree with but then will go out here and have no smoke and no fire for the Arab owned store owner or the Korean nail salon or many of the other businesses that are in his community he doesn't want to he wants he, he gets mad when a black man presents him with and uh, with points as related to passports and traveling overseas and he gets angry at that black man but he has no anger for many of the people in his community that exploit his own community because many of these black males even though they have these good jobs and are supposed to be living so well if where are they living when you take a critical examination of where they live. The same black community they say they want no part of, they are still in that community and just like the swirlers, they sit there and talk about how they don't want to be a part of the community, yet these same men, they get angry when you start talk when those same swirlers start talking about divest and they don't see how they divest just like the swirlers and they divest by taking their resources out of the black community to spend it with the exact same cabal of foreign store owners, yet they also take their money and take it overseas. Yell, complain about the black woman spending money in these foreign businesses, yet they will go and take that exact same money that they have been blessed with and take it to spend it overseas with foreign women, not seeing how their behavior is the same behavior, yet these same men will get angry at me because I want to talk about things as related to black love, black family, black empowerment. And some will say, oh, those concepts are archaic. And when I look at that statement, I say, no, black empowerment is not archaic. Black empowerment is something that we will always need. Black empowerment is something that is intrinsic to building a black community and black empowerment starts with black love because when you have black love then you have power over self and when you have power over self you cannot be controlled by white supremacy nor are you interested in pursuing and taking your resources out of your community and that's something that means something to me, again, because, again, when I hear about brothers out here and sisters out here with black fantasy projects, with, with Kickstarters and Indiegogos, I was taking, again, that Patreon money, that PayPal donations, and I was giving that money to those brothers and sisters, in addition to trying to give that money to black artists out here to design some of the covers for books like the John Haynes series. So I was trying to take black dollars and bring them back to the black community instead of trying to go out here and take a black dollar and send it overseas to a group of people to enrich them at our expense. But your passport black males, they want to sit there and talk about how I shouldn't speak on things because I don't have their kind of money, but all I know is if I ever had their kind of money, you know what I would do with their kind of money? What I'm doing right now with this money that I get, the little that I get with donations, I will take that money and try to enrich our brothers and sisters out here and empower them. 
because this is what a black man is supposed to do. He is supposed to be about building his community. He is supposed to be about building his family. And yes, while we may have issues with black women and we may have issues as black men, men who are God-centered understand that as God's stewards, we have a responsibility to our brothers and sisters to do his work on this earth. And part of that work is loving our neighbors as, our, as we love ourselves. Because if we don't love our neighbors as ourselves, and we don't put our people first, everybody is going to put us last. And sadly, that's what your passport brothers don't understand about what's going on, is that when they put their communities last, the world puts them last. And they sit there, and again, they tell me not to say anything because I don't have their money. But again, if I were as blessed as they are to have maintained full-time employment, I would have been focusing on building in my own community, and I would have been focusing on building my own black family. The only thing that held me up was getting that full-time job, that would have allowed me to continue making the kind of money that these brothers had, because as I see it, the opportunity that they were blessed with was a tremendous one, and it was sad to see them squander the opportunity to go out here and build in their own community, because these brothers didn't want to stay in their, stay in their community. They wanted, they all, they compared their community to the ghetto, but the only way you get to build a community is if you black men come together and build something. But they would rather leave the leave black people all together to go be with others rather than try to do something with like minded other black people. Me myself, I again, if I had those exact same resources that many of these brothers had where you have all of this disposable income to go out here and travel i would rather take some of that money and keep it in my own community and let those dollars travel in my own neighborhood towards improving the quality of life in my neighborhood if you'd like to see me make more videos like this and produce more sjs direct publications you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash app by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to also help me out, you can also pick up some of my SJS Direct publications, which feature positive images of black men and women on Amazon.com by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Spinsterella. Discover the dark side of love in this goth and lovely romance with Spinsterella. Get Spinsterella in paperback and e-readers at your favorite online bookseller today.